<laughs> the other format. So we do it like this. Anyhow. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the very first international life experience tour through our show home. And today I'm here with my colleague Tina. Maybe you can introduce yourself briefly. Good evening to everybody. So my name is Tina. I work for Luxon for five years and I am part of the international sales department. And my name is Richard. I'm more like the tech guy. So I studied industrial automation and then went to the international department. So I've seen a lot of great guys. Actually, I saw some familiar names from Luxon Partners in the chat as well. So hi to you, Henning. Hi to you, <laughs> to the others. <laughs> but this webinar today is mainly about the features. So mainly focused on house builders and customers. And I would say we jump right into it because we have a lot to show, very few time to, to show you. So just some, some stuff. Um, I have here the chat function in Zoom open. So I will always run, be running around with my iPad like this. Not because I need the iPad to control it, no. Just to see what you interfere with me, okay? So please use the chat function. There is Q&A as well but I can only open one simultaneously. So please use the chat and not the Q&A, okay? So maybe we can give it a test and you can use the chat to say hello and where you come from and maybe what you're, what you're currently doing if you're building a house or searching for an apartment or whatever, right? Just to test the log zone or the Zoom chat. Hmm? Okay, great. Hello from Finland, Stephen, UK. Building another house. Well, how many have you built already? <laughs> okay, so finally, let's start. Okay, so it's about automation. It's about smart homes, smart building. But what is it that makes something smart? Hmm? It should make my life easier. It should make life easier. Um, when, you, when you search the media or the media is permanently shooting on us certain things like, hey, there is an app to control your lighting, an app to control your shading, your heating, your music, there is Sonos and Philips Hue and whatever. So what is it now that really makes something smart? And in today's webinar, we will really present you what we believe that a fully integrated house would look like. So a lot of these systems to me are island solutions. They don't talk to each other. The heating system doesn't know what the shading is doing. But there is huge potential, and you will see during this webinar, how impactful it can be that the shading and the heating work hand in hand together for the perfect room climate. Okay, so I would say there is not, not a huge script. We will talk about the main topics, lighting, shading, climate in a room, audio, and alarm. And then, of course, there is a question part where you can ask us anything, and we will show you all the thousands of features we have installed in here. All right, so then let's, let's start. start. When we are in a room like this, you see it's a very beautiful room. We have a kitchen over there, a dining room here. We have also a, an open space, couch and TV area over there, all right? So what or how many lighting circuits do you have in here? Maybe you can film a little uh, the ceiling up there. You have indirect lighting, you have spots, you have pendulum lights here over the dining table. So how would you control this conventionally in a normal house? So normally you have a lot of switches in the room. Mm -hmm. And it goes, it goes on because there is not only lights, there is shading as well. For in the electric version, you also need a lot of switches or push buttons, right? And today I will, or we both will show you a way to control all the lighting circuits in a room like this with just a single click. But how is it possible? So, what do you typically do in a room like this? So, cooking, dining, watching TV, maybe the kids play on the floor. Mm -hmm. And on these habits you have, on these so called scenes or moods, we create just lighting moods that are fitting perfectly what you like to do. And then you can simply use our most beautiful element, which is our touch. And it has five push buttons. One big one in the middle and in every corner, okay? And if I do a single tap here in the middle, I change to my next lighting scene. Maybe you get it on the camera. This might be the TV scene where only the TV area here is dimmed. Huh? 
Then we have another scene, which is even more dimmed. And there might be a very bright lighting scene. And what if you now, for whatever reason, would like to change those predefined lighting scenes? Then you can easily do it within the Luxon app. So, and maybe we show it on the on the iPad, then it's better. Oh, camera, poor camera, <laughs> woman. Um, so I have here all my rooms and room, lounge, and kitchen. And here I have my lighting scenes, which I can go through with a touch like this. And if I would like now here to change this welcome scene, where you see this green colored LED indirectly, then I can go here and simply change the color of this circuit. And you will see life, if you film maybe to the LED, you see life, how the room's behavior is changing. What color do you prefer, Tina? Oh, pink, sure. Oh, of course. You can also change the dimming, right? You can dim it up or dim it down. So you can really see how your room should look like. And then you can save this scene as your new welcoming scene. And then you also have it here as the normal push button concept saved. Okay. So this is the lighting topic. Of course, there are certain rooms or like in, in our case, in every room where you would like to have automatically turning the light on when necessary. So you enter a room, it's dark inside. So you have automatic, your uh, motion scene automatically. Hmm? Yeah, for example, the toilet or the bathroom. Yeah, sense. exactly. But for Luxon, you can use the light also for very different uh, topics. Like, you know, the, the, the old movie, Kevin Alone at Home? Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where he faked like there's a big party in the house ongoing. <laughs> and we have something similar, which is called the present simulation. So you can activate this when you go on holiday or even when you leave the house and nobody's there. And then randomly the house turns on lighting scenes, music, the TV, whatever. So also for the alarm, the light will be used, but this you will see in a second. Then let's continue. Oh, wow, hello guys. In the chat from Moscow, South Africa, Romania, Cyprus, really cool. So the next big topic for us is shading. So it's a big, big topic. It's a big topic. And when you build a house nowadays, what, what, what do you typically have? You have like big glass windows, right? Big terrace doors, so huge glass because it's nice. You have nice light, it's modern architecture. Sure. But there's a problem which you have. Problem. So the house will be hot during the night. It will day. be really hot because the sun is shining on the windows, on the glass, and it will heat up the room. Because of nowadays modern isolation, it's really a big thing. So how can you solve this in a normal house? What Normally you with blinds and shading. Exactly, but with a not automated house, what would you typically do when you know it's a hot day? It's getting hot today. So well, then you have to go from window to window to put down the blinds. Yes, so I check the weather. Is it getting hot today or not? And then I run from blind to blind and I turn them all down and the best lines are those where you have to press for three seconds <laughs> until it finally does the full move. <laughs> so with our solution, there is, or let's say the shading topic depends from country to country. You might have lines outside, inside, or curtains. But um, for our solution in Central Europe, the lines and shading topic is like the biggest entry point for Luxon because we have such a, uh, such a meaningful shading where what, what should happen? Let's, let's play it through with common sense. The sun goes up over there and then moves like this and goes down behind you. What should happen in the morning? So we get the temperature in this room because we do the climate control anyhow, right? For heating or cooling. So we know if it's getting hot. What should happen if our temperature is getting over a certain level? So the blinds should go down? Yes, but which ones? So normally not all blinds in the room, is this possible? So with our solution, we know exactly where the mini server is located. Because when you set it up, you say, hey, I'm here now in Munich, the postal code. So we know exactly where on earth you are. And from this position, we can calculate the astronomic run of the sun. So this sounds all very complicated. So basically, the mini server, the system knows where is the sun. 
Is it there? Is it there? Is it at this height or very low? Winter, summer makes a difference, right? Especially in Norway, maybe the Norwegian guys. Henning knows that. <laughs> Henning knows that. <laughs> so when the sun is there, only this side starts to shake. And moreover, it doesn't close completely like this now. It's also adjusting the slats or the lamelles to an angle where it's still bright in here, but the most of the heat is blocked out. And then the sun moves on. It's on, it's over there, or maybe it's at the corner. Then this slide and this slide are down. Then this one can open. So we follow with our blinds the way of the sun. Then what is when the sun goes down? So then privacy mode would be cool. So I don't know. Because who I have you, a lot of neighbors. Yes, I just wanted to make this old joke. Who of you still has neighbors around your house? So there might be Euro millionaires in the chat or serial killers, no? So most of us, we have neighbors, right? So at night, when it's getting dark and you have lighting in here, everybody sees inside and we don't like to have this. Not so really. automatically, sun goes down, privacy mode like this. What else could we do with the shading? Maybe talking about the next day. So when the sun goes up, the shading should go up. Exactly. Or in the bedroom, maybe you want to sleep longer, so the bedroom might be excluded of this function. But what could you do with the alarm clock in the morning? So it would be cool when the blinds are will be open and with the alarm clock. Exactly. So we use the topics we control anyhow: shading, music, lighting, and we use this stuff. So you set up an alarm clock in the morning when you want to wake up at seven. And then right before seven, slowly the light fades up. It dims up. It makes you wake up smoothly. The music station, your favorite radio can turn on slowly and then getting louder. And also the shades could slowly open. So this is just one of the few uh, of the of the hundred features we can do with this. And there were. But for example, in the afternoon, there is my favorite movie on TV and the, the room should be completely dark. Exactly, so somehow you should still be able to interfere with your shading, right? So now we, we heard about automatically where the sun is at, it's all nice, but what if I want to have control? I want to see outside, it was raining for three weeks. I don't care if it's overheating, can I do it? Hopefully, yes. Maybe you can show us. Oh yeah. So, we can use our push button. And this one now controls all the blinds in this room centrally. And I always, I always say if, if somebody, some people might ask now, hey, can I have a single push button for just this line and one for just this line? And of course we have them on stock. That's not the problem, but you most likely will never use them because when would you really like to just control this blind here? If the sun is blinding you, which is automatically shaded. And if you want to watch your movie, football or Germany's a Next Top Model film. or a romantic film, of course, um, then you can put all the shades down centrally. So this is how we see the control of the push panel here. Again, lighting scenes, shading up and down or curtains opening and close. But then we have two more left. So in a room like this, what else would you like to control? Oh, I have a topic. It could be movie, uh, audio, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it can be audio. And multi-room audio and all this stuff is getting more and more popular. So to me, the evolution of the audio system was like this. Once you had a CD player locally with a local source, a CD playing music in one room. Since a while, there is more and more multi-room systems coming on the market, Sonos or Bose or whatever, where you can play multiple different types of music in different rooms or the same music in the same room. And the third step of evolution to me is a fully integrated music system into your house, into your building, because then you can also do text to speech. You can modify yourself if the sun goes down and your garage door is still open or other important things like you have an alarm, let's say a fire alarm, a water alarm. You can use the same speakers typically used for the audio listening to music now being used for alarms, okay? Burglar alarm, water alarm, fire alarm, gas alarm, whatever. And also our doorbell. 
and also, of course, the doorbell. And then if you have children or small babies, you would like to have a logic where the doorbell is blocked. So it's just flashing the light, but no sound. Okay, so the baby doesn't wake up, but you still recognize that somebody's at the door. So how can we control it now? And there are certain rooms where you would like to have music automatically. Like, which ones, Tina? In the kitchen. In the kitchen, yes, or in the bathroom. Yeah. Right? And there are other rooms where maybe would not like to have it, like in living the room, bedroom. children's bedroom or whatever. And so you can have it automatically or you can only play it when you control it via the push button. And I can just play it shortly because of the YouTube live stream of GEMA license and stuff. So look, look at this, I turn it on. Now you hear music playing, hopefully. I can adjust the volume up and down and I can change my room favorites like my lighting scenes with a double tap. And then it goes to the next favorite, okay? Volume up and down. Down. Change your room favorites. Of course, guys, you can stream on AirPlay and Spotify and whatever if you want to. But for a daily use, I would not like to be dependent on my phone. Right? I wouldn't like it. I can. If I have friends, I sit here and, you know, then somebody's asking me, can you Spotify this and that song? Sure. But for daily usage, it's not required. Okay? For some people, it's important to have. For others, it's like a side topic. So you can control everything on the push button. Okay. Now, there is one more special thing to show us in the kitchen. Follow Tina. <laughs> so, can we present it now, our special thing? You can, sure. Okay. So I will touch surface, as you can see here. We have to activate it. And then we can also control the light and also our blinds and also audio. All right. So you see, this is the perfect example of if you have sticky hands and you don't want to touch your push button, right? There is this built in the surface and actually you can hear, see, it's not making this go if I wipe the, if I wipe the, uh, the surface, you have to activate it first. And then hopefully you see on the video, you have here now the five second timer where you can control it. And in this time you have here, I, it's barely, it's barely seeable on the, on the video, but here you can control lighting, shading and everything. Okay. So, um, what else can we, can we show? I would say we have a quick look in another room. Okay. So we can check out what's happening there. <laughs> so in our show home in the half quarter in Austria, we have five kind of hotel rooms. And here are four of them and one is downstairs. They're basically all the same inside. And here you can see that every room for every um, person is, has its own access solution. Right, and you can have a dedicated code here to open it or open it with these so-called NFC tags, which can be also coming from the phone directly. And if I open it now, then you see, I can open the door like this. So follow us. Ladies, Ladies first. first. <laughs> okay. So let's take a seat. Let's take a seat. Let's take a seat. So um, she, she forbid me to make the joke, but I have to do it. So what do you typically oh. do in a room like this? <laughs> Go to bed and sleep. <laughs> exactly. So what you, can, <laughs> what you can see over there is that we have here another version of our push button, which is the touch night light. And it has exactly the same feature. And that's something important. Um, every, in every room, we have the light in the middle, shading up and down, music and everything. doesn't matter in which one. So you don't have to label this stuff, right? If you, if you start labeling your push buttons, to me personally, this is going not in the right direction of what is smart, okay? So you can see there was automatically light turning on because it was too dark. And I can also control the lines on the left-hand side or on your right-hand side like this. 
And also I have different kind of lighting scenes here. Okay. So what happens if you, <laughs> if you come to bed a little after your, uh, your <laughs> boyfriend or your husband or both of them? <laughs> Hopefully not. No. And let's say, guys, maybe maybe you know the situation. You go to bed and your nice wife is already uh, waiting for you and she's asking you the final question. Have you turned off all the lights? Have you turned off all the lights? And then you say, yes, sure, I did. Are and you sure? Said, Are you sure about that? Sure? And then we're like, wow. you, you know this? You know this, guys. <laughs> it's a stereotype. No, I'm, I'm kidding. But in a locked zone smart zone, you can be sure. Because I haven't told you, but if you leave a room, you can do a double tap on the push button in the middle, which turns off everything. Not only the light, also the music if it's playing, also standby consumers like the TV, if you want to. So a double tap can make sure everything in a room is turned off. And then there's two kinds of rooms where there is one step further than a double click. So imagine you go to bed, the master bedroom, and you would like to turn off all the lights in the house, maybe except of the guest room and maybe the kids' room, depending on the type of education you'd like to have, right? <laughs> so in this kind of rooms, you can make a triple click. And this triple click here in the middle does a lot of different things. It, it turns off all the lights in the whole house. Right. It tells the heating or cooling system, hey, I'm now in bed. You can save money and cool down. Right? Mm -hmm. It can turn on the alarm system, only the outer shell, without motion or present sensors, just the outer shell. Um, it can also, what else have I kind of forgot? Yes. Then imagine everything is off, and then I'm, I'm getting older. I'm now in the 30s almost, so I have to stay up at night. I, 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 I mean, I'm honest with you guys. We're just, just, <laughs> just all of us here in the night. So when I stay up at night, um, before Luxon, it was like, hey, you sneak out somehow with the phone, maybe lighting your way, or you step onto a Lego, or you turn on some lights, and then it's like, oh, ah, worst case, ah. exactly. exactly, right? <laughs> so what happens here now, once you did the triple click, activating the so-called night mode, then after this one, no longer does the music turn on automatically, because then it would be maybe too much. And also the normal light, which is turned on by the presence sensor is no longer as bright as now. No, it's now something like this. It's even darker. We put it on something, you can see it on the video, but it's even darker. So you don't wake up your girlfriend or your wife or all two of them, that. exactly. <laughs> and that's a really cool feature. And it's really handy. And I didn't believe that I really need this until I, until I had it installed in my house. And it's really like with this reddish color, orange color, it's like you don't wake up. So it should be a color like, like this, right? Right. So then I would say we, start, we go back again to the living room and then we show you the alarm. Okay, let's go guys. Ladies first. <laughs> <laughs> Our camera woman will do a double click. Oh no, let's, let me do it. Come, come outside and come from. From here and there. So you leave a room, double click, double tap, and we'll turn off. Okay. All right. So for the demonstration, let's pull down the shades. And again, talking about the alarm. Um, yeah, one question from Richard. In the chat, can the touch switch also control the air conditioning and heating? And I almost forgot before the alarm, we have to talk about this as well. Climate in the room. So depending on where you live, you, room climate to you means something different. So in, uh, let's say, the, the Central Europe uh, regions, you might have both heating and cooling. Let's say in Norway, for example, you maybe just have heating. Or in Saudi Arabia, you only have air conditioning, right? And depending on what you have, it was typical. I give you an example. When I studied at university, uh, living together with my uh, girlfriend in a flat, and when I when I came home, or let's say let's say she comes home, winter jacket, ah, it's cold in here, and then she turned up the room thermostat. Ah, it's cold in here. Turn it up. 
it takes like hours, literally hours for the underfloor heating to make a difference. So it was the same temperature when I arrived half an hour later. And I was like, it's freaking hot in here, isn't it? I looked at the room thermostat. and said, yeah. Again, she turned it up and I turned it down again. So if you have to play around with the room thermostat in the room a lot, then your system and your regulation isn't working properly. So how does it work for Loxone now? In every of our push panels, the Loxone Touch, we have both humidity and temperature inside. So now we know the temperature, but how can you now adjust it? How can you now define it? How is it working? And actually for us, we say, we ask the user, Tina, when would you like to have temperature in a room like this? Another temperature, for example, when I wake up in the morning and in the morning I will go then to the bathroom, then it should be higher temperature. So bathroom would be a perfect example. When you need temperature in the bathroom, both are working maybe. So during working days, only in the morning, and, and then, then the when you come back in the af late afternoon in the evening. And in between, I don't need the temperature. So when should the heating or cooling system now start to heat up or cool down? And nobody knows, right? Because it depends if you have radiators or underfloor heating or air conditioning or HVAC or whatever, it depends. So our system learns the room's behavior. When you install locks on the first day, it will start soon ahead, a couple of hours, and then it will start heating. And then it knows, okay, it was way too soon to start because I want to have temperature at six, but I reached it at four. So the next day it will start later. So it learns exactly how long it takes to heat up the room. And then you don't have to worry about reaching your temperatures. You just have to tell us when and which temperature. And then you just have to make sure that your wife and you decide the same temperature. Okay? I, I guess this is the biggest problem. Here. This might be the biggest <laughs> problem. So now, Let's talk about the alarm system. And as I told you before, we now can take several of our both sensors and also actuators for the alarm. And what could it be now that triggers an alarm? Classically, window contacts, right? Door contacts, glass breaking sensors, I don't know. But for lock zone, we can also use the presence sensors, which turn on our light if necessary, which turn on the music if you want to, now also to indicate if there is a burglar unauthorized, okay? So let me demonstrate this to you. Um, let's go together quickly to the app. And then you will see I have here a central function called alarm. And now I arm it. Now the alarm is armed, nothing is happening, okay? But if I now, let me close the door here, sorry. You, I'm not sure if you heard it, but there was a text-to-speech from the audio system which told me, hey, the alarm has now been armed. Okay, so I know it's armed, everything's fine. But what happens if somebody breaks in? Oh, no, first of all, I window, or sorry, not window, out of the, out of the terrace door. So let me disarm the alarm. And Tina, where's the push button to open this one? Just this I one. I cannot see this one. What, what to do then? I will give them a try. Give them a try. Yeah, I will give them a try. Good. So you see, we use the same window contact somewhere built in and un un unseeable, not only for the alarm, but also to say, hey, this blind needs now to be open because I want to go outside. But don't get me wrong, we still have them on stock. <laughs> so now again, I arm the alarm. Okay. And now I wait. Maybe you hear it now. I wait for the text to speech. It's a German text to speech because we're here in the headquarter, set on German. But now let me break in. I'm the bad burglar. I'm the bad guy. Then you see automatically, also on my phone, I get the notification that the alarm went off. I see which one, terrace door. I'm not sure if you can read it. And then, the whole house starts blinking. 
the shades go up, the music is crazy. If I don't get an elliptical, <laughs> then I will be out very fast. So now I can turn it off. Okay. So this is the standard alarm feature. And actually it's like we use what we have already. Even if you don't have the window context, we could still use the presence detectors to detect if there is somebody inside. Um, another topic about security would be, um, ah, I missed the word, fire, <laughs> smoke detection, which is um, up here. You see the locks of smoke detector. And in case there is a fire, of course, this sensor is certified for various countries and it makes you certified beep, beep, beep. But moreover, it sends us also the signal, hey, there is something wrong. It also opens the shading. So you have the option to go out of any window or any terrace door because a fire most likely would also lead to a power loss. And then you stand in front of closed electric shading, trying to get out, losing some uh, seconds to finally get out of the burning house, right? Um, of course, also we make the, the, we turn the lighting on so you can see actually at night where to go out, so your light turns on. And also the music or the audio system plays this alarm sound. And I can more, uh, I can better show you uh, this feature with the water alarm. So we have here a very little handy sensor, which is the Loxon water detector. See it like this. And there's two contacts here. And if those two contacts close with water, we get also the alarm. So let me try this. It was easier uh, with the first live tours where I had a little sweaty hands and stuff. You can use my hands. Let's see, so I'm not fully relaxed. So let me do it more like this. You again here, first alarm stage, the touch is clicking, light starts blinking, and the shading would also go up. And then ah, let us deactivate it like this. You can then here see which water sensor, if you have like one at the kitchen sink, one for the washing machine. Of course, you need to know which one. So here you see large kitchen, all right? So this is like the uh, water security feature. So let me briefly ask you guys in the chat, what do you think about it so far? And also, what would you like to see next? What would you like to see more, right? So there is a lot of questions, let me see. Can, uh, do you have motorized curtains as well? Loxon itself is more about the control of those things. So the curtains, electric curtains, standard ones, come from other manufacturers locally in your country, and we do the control of them. So we have the, the products to control motors, but we don't have the motors, except with some German corporation called Geiger, but this is another story, okay? Can we see the control room? Yes, uh, guys in the chat, they want to see the cabinet. I think we, we show you this uh, uh, at the end, right? Maybe, are you guys interested in, in access? Maybe, if somebody rings the doorbell, could be a topic. Yes, may I beg you, Tina, yeah. to go downstairs and we have a look what happens when she rings the doorbell. Let's give her some seconds. So I see, I see her, I could now here open the door. I could pick up the phone. I could talk to her also remotely if I'm not at home. And then I can tell her, okay, yes, the post, the post guy. Yes, please that get the parcel inside. I open you the door and then I see him leaving and then I close it again electrically. So access for us is also very important because we can automatically, if there is granted access with, where have I lost my key? With the... NFC or any other kind of security, like ELI scanner or fingerprint, doesn't matter to us as long as Loxon gets the signal. And this opens the door and deactivates the alarm. And this is such a handy feature because uh, I, I can speak for myself. I had an alarm system and you need to, to turn it on like this with some code. And at some point you're just like tired of it. I just go to the bakery. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to work and I only use it for holiday. But here for us, when you triple click when leaving, the whole house turns off. 
the alarm arms. You go back home, you deactivate the alarm with access. This is what I call an automated house. And actually, I, I can show you another pretty cool feature. When we talked about the leaving room function, let me quickly turn on the TV for you. So I turn on the TV, normal remote. I could now also for the home cinema guys chat, I could now listen to the command. I could say then close the blinds, close the curtains, turn on my dedicated home cinema scene and everything, put down the beamer screen, turn on the beamer, switch to HDMI one, whatever, all this home cinema stuff, if you want to, sure. And now, what if I leave the room? I do what? I do a double click. So light turns off and the TV turns off and the shading goes back to automatic mode. So you see here, the shades will go fully down and then let's be curious about how high is the sun and on which angle the slats will adjust back, okay? Now there is like this strange silence for three seconds until it's fully closed. <laughs> Uh, maybe check the chat. Can the system be controlled by voice? Yes. Uh, Tina, please turn on. <laughs> <laughs> not this one. Not this voice. Okay. Um, actually, we we are not a huge fan of this uh, voice control. Just 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 quickly, I forget it. Else. You see here, this is how the shades look like. They go down the slats. They adjust the angle, so it's still light comes inside. It's not fully dark, so it's like it's like really good. Okay. Fully closed would be just dark. You need artificial light, makes no sense. This is how sun blocking looks like. So where was I? Voice control. The voice topic. Voice topic. So um, we're not a huge fan because of security things. And actually, Loxone is working completely without a cloud solution. So the whole system, the whole program is stored inside the house in the cabinet on an SD card, a memory card, like for a camera. And if you would like to use voice control, you need to send the login data to your house. So the most private data you have over those cloud services, like through Google, through Amazon, through Siri. That's why there are some, some integrations possible, but we do not really propose it to do. Okay. Um, is there a standard door lock that, meets, that needs to meet? Well, again, same story. There is like hundreds of different door types and locks. We can power it. And if power, it should open. So we don't care if it's like only uh, making the, the, the unsecure opening, which just opens the, I, I don't know the English word, but also the other one, which turns the key possible, not from us. We can control it. Um, how does lock zone system give the command to the automatic lock? Um, is it able to control the lock via Wi-Fi or Bluetooth? Um, I don't really get this question, Peter. Maybe you can, you can uh, ask again. I don't really get it. Um, another one, how to control third-party motors for blinds? And this is a very technical question. So basically, you can simply use two relays and pull the cables back to the main cabinet or a little smarter way. We have decentralized actuators, which are built in right at the motor with a smart wiring system. So you spare a lot of work installing them where then they can be controlled um, individually. And also there is a wireless solution, just saying. So all you see here can be achieved wirelessly as well. And in my house, actually, I have everything on air, which is our wireless technology. And I lived there since five years with I think now 250 devices. I mean, I'm, I'm sitting on top of the source, but still. <laughs> um, other questions. Uh, can I invite my guest into the Loxon app to for control my house? Yes, actually you can make dedicated users. So like you log into the app. Like the user might be Richard or Tina with different permissions. So she has all the permissions and I have just those where, which she gives me. For example, which I allow. Which she guess. allows me. Or actually in my house, I have a guest user, which can then uh, only operate certain things like the guest room and let's say the, the lounge and the kitchen. But this user, this guest user can maybe not adjust the heating temperatures or other important stuff like, I don't know. Okay. So different users, different stuff. Um, what is the long time term roadmap for tree lighting? Um, yes, so for, for those who don't know, we have our own light fittings. And we developed them simply because 
um, we wanted to provide something high quality, which is working hand in hand. And I always say Loxone is a little bit like Apple in a way that you know if you buy an Apple keyboard, an Apple mouse, and you have a Mac or an iPad, it's simply working 100%. There is no flickering for the lighting. You can be sure it's just working. But Loxone is open on the other side where you can integrate other stuff. You can buy an Ikea lamp or from your grandmother, the big old chandelier with normal, very old dinosaur lighting bulbs. I don't care. We can control them. That's why I sometimes call Luxone a clopen solution, closed and open. Okay. Um, can you choose different designs for the control panels? Yes, actually we have uh, four different versions. One like this in black, anthracite, the same one in white. And then there is a smaller version out of plastic, which perfectly fits into normal uh, standard design. So you could have like the Noxon touch and underneath a normal socket from certain manufacturers like Kira E55, I believe. What else have we got? Um, boom, 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 boom. What is the interface from the Luxon system to lock to integrate the door locks? Um, it can be done wire, wired, of course, but it can, might be also be done wirelessly. It depends a little bit on the situation, but Luxon will uh, guide both you as an end customer and also maybe some of you uh, are installers in the chat. Uh, we, we consult both of you for individual projects. Okay, so just get in contact with us. Maybe we have a quick look on the tablet. What else have we got in here? So, of course, is, this is our show house. We have a lot of different features in here. So there is, for example, a way to see statistics of how much photovoltaic we have produced over the days. Here you see. You can also check out what was the consumption. And actually, our camera woman here charged the car, right? So here you can see a nice, it was a Tesla or a BMW? Tesla, I believe. Here the Tesla was charged. So you can see this huge peak, okay? And if you don't know what happened there, then you can figure out, oh, there might be something which consumes. Like maybe you live in Italy and there are crazy guys who like, your power, <laughs> okay? I don't know. What else have we got? <clears throat> you see here, there is also something like storm protection, especially for outside shading. It's important to understand that if there is a wind, a storm coming, uh, the blinds will be damaged. So not only do we have a local sensor measuring the actual, uh, the actual wind speed right now, but also we have a weather forecast. So we know if a storm is coming in one hour, then let's not wait for the wind speed meter to turn on really fast, then pre-actively pre put them up, okay? And then you see, we have also in this room, large kitchen. Let's quickly jump into the heating solution. Maybe you see you have um, here in the large kitchen, the temperature, and you can see here in the properties, you can now decide which times would you like to have your temperatures. And here is from 6.30 a.m. to 10 p.m. set that I would like to have it. And now I can easily adjust which days in the week and which time would I like to have it, okay? And how I now change the temperature actually, again in here, temperatures, and now I can adjust from 22 and a half to 23 or maybe down a little, and then it's changed, okay? Then there is one other cool feature, which is the touch and grill. So all the barbecue guys out there, but not only those, um, you might find this really interesting. This is another way of the five control panel, locks on touch. And again, here you turn on your different lighting scenes, shading up and down and everything. But in addition, you can turn on a timer. You see, it's now off. And if I hold and press long, then I can say, okay, a timer of two minutes, whatever seconds, okay. And then this timer is, uh, is running. And in addition to this, it has the option to include these thermostates for barbecue, which have a, a really long cable. So this can be plugged in at the back, and then this can be taken into your barbecue, into your grill, or into your oven, and then you know exactly when the, the meat is at a certain temperature. 
right? So this is really cool. And it, it seems like a little, a little uh, gadget or whatever, but this I often use also when I don't have the touch surface in the kitchen plate. So if the, for whatever reason, the stone might be uh, including metal and then it's not working, but also if the kitchen build, the kitchen is already built and it's hard for me to, to fit it under, uh, this is perfect because you can carry it around. It's on power, not on battery, on or battery. So like like a phone, it can be recharged and you can carry it around. And actually in the app, you can change it to be controlling now the outside area. If you want to take it outside, simply switch it. And then this controls my outside barbecue area. All right. What other questions have we got? Oh, wow, some very specific stuff like communication with Daikin. Um, actually, I don't know. If you have the protocol on RS-485, then we might talk with them. Rule, rule of thumb, guys. If third-party components like HVAC or whatever have interfaces and they also share the dictionary with us so you know exactly what to tell him on which language, then we most likely can integrate them. But we can be as open as we want if the other party doesn't share the dictionary, it's hard for us to be great. So I would gladly uh, come back to you uh, privately about this specific topic. Um, like all this internet of things like Miele smart oven and stuff, most of them are at least in the Wi-Fi or in the local network. And then the mini server can send commands based on these interfaces. So for example, in my case, I have a Samsung smart TV, smart TV. And I can turn it on via a network command, like the old days, wake on LAN. So I can turn it on and off with a command in a network, for example. Okay. What other questions do you have, guys? Challenge me. <laughs> I'm getting rusty. Um, what else can we show, Tina? Any idea, meanwhile? Oh, good question. What if you go on holiday? How complicated is it Obviously to activate? Good. And actually in, in my previous house, the heating system was so complicated to bring it to winter and summer mode, you had to stay on one foot, close one eye, press this button for three seconds, then another one for just one second, and then you can change. Something like this. <laughs> I, I, I'm kidding, right? It's like black and white now. But it's so complicated, I, every day, or not every day, every year i needed to check it out again because i couldn't remember and in lock zone you can now simply have one thing one simple switch in the app holiday mode which you activate and then everything happens automatically automatically your uh, heating system will only keep frost protection five degrees so nothing freezes inside here your security system uh, present simulation, everything goes on, alarm goes on, it's just one simple click. And who doesn't know the situation? You go to the airport, have I turned off everything? You've forgotten the Kevin alone home. Yes, Kevin alone at home, right? Um, automatic pool control. Yes, uh, if the founders are watching, we still beg for a demo <laughs> pool here in the base camp. <laughs> And of course, yes, pool control is a topic for us because we can all, we can, of course, it's like everything you can think of is possible. If you can make a logical sentence out of it, I can program it for you, I promise. So in, in pools in Switzerland, I have a customer called Woodley. Definitely check it out. It won the European award of the nicest pool. And it's controlled by Luxon, Woodley, Schwimmbad Technik, a Swiss company. And they control everything. They control the, what's the English name? Chlor, chloride, right? The salt, the chlor, the, they use photovoltaic to heat up the pool. They, they do everything. They do filtering. So you don't care about the pool because the pool is a lot of work, if you know what I mean, like measuring the pH and uh, pH minus, pH plus, like feeling like, <laughs> like cooking something. And this can be done automatically, of course. What about software security? Um, of course, as I said, the software and let, let's say the house, the automation is like the most private thing I have, right? Like this is, this is a topic everybody thinks about. So as I said, for us, no cloud solution. Everything is stored locally. Then, of course, it depends a little if your Wi-Fi password is 1234 and your login to Loxone is ABCD. <laughs> 
Okay, if you know what I mean. But anything else is due to the, the newest uh, standards. Do you have already experience with Austria email heat pump system? What is an email system? Um, talking about, about this, um, you can have different times of notification. So I did several, various different projects in restaurants, the Google days with the restaurants. Uh, we had to measure temperatures in fridges and they need to protocol it. So you can make protocols out of it. You can automatically send those data via email. Actually, you can check out the blog about the uh, verbs in Kollerschlag at the head hall, which has been automated. Exactly those features were uh, covered. And heating pump control would be very cool. I think we should go down to the technical room, shall I we? Think I, think, right. I think the time is right. So follow me, follow me downstairs. And meanwhile, I will talk about the difference between motion and presence. That's a good question. And actually, present or let's say motion is if you move. There is an optical sensor, infrared. If you move, it gets you. If you stay still or sit down, watch a movie, type something on the keyboard, you might not be seen. Okay. Presence is something on top of it. So there is in our presence detector also an acoustic sensor inside which automatically detects if something in a room is loud. So if you watch TV or if you type something, it might be enough that the, that the presence sensor will still detect you. So it's more accurate in a way. Okay, so let's go to the technical room now. Do you have a smart plug and socket? Yes, I have nine smart sockets in my house because they're so freaking awesome. I can reach on and off the circuit. Like I can use it for a reading lamp but I can also measure energy. So I can show you exactly on my, meanwhile I open my own house, then I show you the consumption of my TV. So we can see if my girlfriend is now watching TV. Nine of them in every, in every room almost. Um, it's just a second. So meanwhile, I, I explain you the, I park you guys on quickly for a second. Um, what you can see here is the technical room. And actually it's quite big and quite impressive. And you might think, ah, oh, do I need such a big room? No, for us, it was a topic, of course, that we have some spare space to test stuff. Because the show home for us is not only for our guests and for demonstration, it's also about it's, it's also our best laboratory. So every solution, every new software features and stuff are tested in here. So very quickly, what is done here? We have a heating pump, which we can interfere with. So we can tell we have a photo. Some free for free. Please guys, heat up the boiler for free because warm water is the best way of uh, storing the option for a battery like we actually have over there. There is a battery from a company called Fonios, okay, which is an Austrian brand, which is simply in the same network, in the same router, same as the uh, convert of the inverter, sorry, um, the DC AC converter. And then we can know, okay, if this is full, fully charged, if there is nothing to, to, to come, then please heat up for free the warm hotter than usual. Then in this room, in this house, we have underfloor heating everywhere. And here we have a very, very deep integration of the system. So typically you have it on a room basis, like here. We have several different valve actuators for each room. Like here, room number five, room number five, bathroom, bath, and so on. And the, actually, these two are blinking red simply because we indicate if currently water is flowing or not. So this doesn't mean they're not working. So these are currently not heating because temperature is fine and these are open. So this is like on a room basis, like in with solution, you can reach, let's say, 80% of efficiency. But if you want to go all in and you really want to save and get the most out of it, then you can really integrate the system on a very deep way, like controlling the mixing valve. It's like in the shower. This one is like you, you change the, the temperature in the shower with this thing here, hotter or warmer. It does the same. 
to reach a certain flow temperature, which goes to each room. And depending on the temperature here, and depending on how, how, how far you open the individual rooms, you get a certain temperature. And in case we know, the system knows, just the bathroom, a small room needs temperature, all the others are fine, then please don't go with the maximum pre-flow temperature. No, go lower, save money, and you still get the same result. This is what I expect from a smart heating system in the house. And I, I most likely, you guys also want to see the main cabinet. So I also like to show you this. But before, as from energy consumption of the TV for each single day from the smart socket. And you see it also by months. So there was lockdown somewhere, right? Where you see a, a big peak, <laughs> okay? Yeah, this was the lockdown probably. Yeah, of course. This is my house. This is the smart socket, okay? So coming back to the main cabinet. Here there is like nothing too special. This is what's mandatory from the, from the electrical side. But here we see the first Luxon device, which is the interface between the meter and our system. And we can read out the actual consumption from the grid coming in. Also, if we put our produced energy back, this we can see here, and then we can react it. Then over here, we see this is the main cabinet, and it's enormous. And actually, I was the guy, I was part in building it when I started the Luxon 2016. So that's why I'm pretty proud of it. But most of you might think, wow, it's enormous. I don't have that much space. And actually, over the last uh, couple of years, the system has improved in terms of wiring and space. So typical cabinets nowadays with the same functionality are like this size, okay? And of course, in here, everything that you see here is dimming channels, color light, okay? Then you see only one mini server is controlling the whole house with 500 or 450 square meters, I believe, just by one mini server. Okay. And again, to the, uh, to the washing machine, you will also find down there, I hope you get it on the shot here, the water sensor. So, in case there is some water leakage from those guys, we also uh, realize this. Okay. Then there is the jet going on. Um, is the entire system on 24 volt or do you require mains to power operate in certain components? Yes, the system works on low power, also the lamps, because for us it's like, it's like uh, the nicest way to dim certain lights, right? And the mini server and everything is on 24. Do you measure electrical consumption and solar production? Yes, this device in the network where also the mini servers in the fleet spots can tell us the production, production only. This one tells us the total house to a grab. Like here. So these are certain sockets, or for certain circuits, sorry, not sockets. And on a socket space, you can also um, use the Luxon, let's say, smart socket. Luxon, so just to have an image. This is the Luxon. Oops. This is the Luxon smart socket here. Okay. Plugged in normal socket. 16 ampere relay, you can switch heavy loads with it energy management and temperature sensor, all built in this little device. So this is really cool. Then there was a question about the audio server. Yes, um, of course, also here we have the network cabinet. And you know, guys, when you when you network around a little, then it's getting a little messy over time. Maybe this, you can get this here uh, on, the, on the screen. And you see over there, we have the audio servers and the stereo extensions for all the speakers. And these small little guys in there make the powerful music. So this new digital technology, no more amplifiers like this size for loud music. No, it's shrink down by technology. Okay. Um, 
Iran has the best climate control ever in comparison to other systems. Thank you, Dimitri, for this compliment. It's like fate, but it's like we spoke about it before, but no, that's, that's life. The new audio server is awesome. Um, okay, the, wi the signal getting a little choppy due to Wi-Fi connection. Okay, so let's go upstairs again, okay? So, you see here the main entrance, but let's go outside now quickly. Ah, okay, so we, we don't have shoes on, but we, we, we do it. We do it for you guys. <laughs> and actually, if I, here on the NFC, hold my key to it, then you see and hear the door opening automatically. And here outside is the intercom. And if I ring the doorbell here, let me show you again like this. I can see here it opening. And I can here open the door. And maybe you can hear it. But now let's go upstairs. Okay. So now we oh we did it time goes by if you have fun let me close the just for acoustics the door here. Mm. so some maybe some personal uh things from us both tina and i don't be shy no uh, but please stay away one meter <laughs> <laughs> both tina and i we live in our own Luxon house since how many years for you uh seven seven years for you and five and a half for me and when i start I, I did a very i did a very big mistake in my life when i started at locks home but not because i started but just before i started i completely renovated my house including the electrical part and then i was like my you, you know when you do your own house it takes some time and, and the woman my girlfriend she reminded me every three months about i should fix something right every three months can you imagine not and, really. <laughs> <laughs> and I went to Luxon. I was a week, uh, a week away with my boss Manuel that time. And I came back home and was like, it's completely awesome. We need this. I will put this in there and there and there and there. And she was like, my friend, <laughs> you believe not. <laughs> and then I started in my house, retrofitting in my own room. Richard's room. I was allowed in my own room. <laughs> and then she was like, huh, this colored light looks a little nice. And actually it was a trick because to me, colored light was never a topic. And then she was like, hmm, maybe let's retrofit the colored light in the living room. And now she's changing the color depending on the season fitting to the stuff staying around in the house. So over the years, I now have a fully equipped house with all the functions. I retrofitted everything. So Logson has both ways, new buildings, retrofittings, houses, apartments, offices, hotels, restaurants, breweries, wineries. I can go on and on and on. So this is one solution for everything you need. So both as an end user perspective, you want to build a house, buy an apartment, renovate something, build new, or from an electrician or an installer perspective, this is the perfect solution for you and um alexander this question yes it's a bit technical you can you can have different outputs and inputs on the audio server so you can have spdif to communicate to certain home cinema systems but if you're interested in this we would gladly discuss this topic with you one by one because this would now a little bit uh, would be too much for this today's webinar so what's the next steps now tina what what what, what to do for those guys now so I guess the end customers will, will receive a newsletter after this webinar. So you can fill out the form and then we will contact you to recommend you an electrician or maybe you have your own one. And he is interested to become a partner. So both is possible. Exactly. And I can say it again. Luxon solution can be learned by everybody. So if you have your electrician already decided because it's your brother-in-law or whatever and it's it's fixed, okay, <laughs> then you can send this electrician, this installer to us to learn about Luxon. And we can do the planning for your house with him together and we propose him the nicest and easiest way to fix everything. We take them by the hand because your success as a partner is our business, right? It's correct. <laughs> and for the end customers, I can really just speak from personal experience. Life, life is easier since I have Luxon 
Yeah. I mean, now, meanwhile, we got a baby. So let's say it's it's again like it was before. <laughs> <laughs> um, to the chat, um, how to go about if you want to become a Loxon installer? Well, just like this, if you agree, Krista, from marketing, if we send a newsletter with both links for end customers and for installers, Yes, so Jacob, you will get the link by email tomorrow. Okay, so I think that's, that's it. it. I had a wonderful time with you, with Tina. Thank you to Thank both you. of you. Thanks to the camera woman for following <laughs> us like crazy through the whole house. There was no <laughs> script, this was all live. It's, it's cool. So in case you're an electrician, a system integrator, an installer, a heating guy, a photovoltaic, whatever. You forgot the end customer. No, just no. the electricians. Oh. Join us, join me in my webinar about how to become an installer. It's the 22nd. Check it out on the website. We put everything in this email. So um, check it out. I will show you how to program a house like this with 77 functions in under 10 minutes. 10 minutes. So stay safe. Thanks for joining today. Have a nice evening. Bye See bye. you soon at Luxon. Have a nice automation in your house. Thank you. Bye-bye.